Let me go ahead and do a sound check like always. So just give it a moment. You know how it is. There's always a lag from when I record to when it actually shows up live. So let's, let's check this out and see. Yep. Cool. The sound is working. And we're past all the advertising in case they popped up on your screen. So here's the problem. And then we'll talk about the situation and how to fix it. So hold on a sec. So the problem is on these figures, sometimes the ab crunch is really loose. And when the ab crunch is loose like this, and this figure is known for this, this is like the um, poster child for loose abs. And I think it's because they made a whole new torso for this. So they can have the snake on it and his neck and everything else. But when they made the new torso for him, they just made the size in between here a little too wide. So he just flip flops all over. And I personally always leave mine crunched pretty far over like that. That way I don't have a problem with it. But obviously not everyone's gonna wanna keep theirs crunched all the way over. So that's what I'm gonna talk to you about how to fix this. Now, if you take a look, you can see light through, let me put a light on the other side of this. You can see light through his uh, um, torso right here. If you can see that or not. There we go, there it is. So you can see there's actually a gap there. So we have to fill that gap with something. Now there's a lot of different ways to fill that gap. Um, one way is to use something like super glue and then um, put it on there and then make sure you keep moving and you don't stop. But because that gap's so wide, it's gonna make a huge mess with super glue. A second way is to use like a, a fast um, drawing type of uh, epoxy type stuff. Again, if you stop moving it or something else, it will cause an issue. And a third way I like to use is just to take rubber bands and shove them in there. So most of the figures come with these nice flat rubber bands like this where one side's flat and, and the other side's not. And just using these to slip them on and then put it up inside that part of the figure helps hold the figure because it fills that area in so you don't end up with um, so much space in there. So let's go ahead and just work this right up into that joint. Now there's some tricky parts about it. One is you may end up having this spot in the front that we'll have to try to push way up high to try to work this like dental floss. You know, I bet you even wax dental floss would work for this. If you got some nice flat wax dental floss. And we'll just work this right up into the abs. Nice and high up there. Bring that around town. Bring it around town. And just tuck it way up inside there. You can see how high I tucked that up in there. And then just jam it up there. There we go. And now that I have that up and nice and tight up there, now I'll just take the back and I'll just uh, um, cut this and retie it and then shove it up inside there. That's the best way to do it. You can feel it's already starting to get tight and that's what we want. So it's nice and tight now at this point and basically just taking and tying this off and then shoving the tight end inside that crack right there would just fix your problem and you'd be done. But because I wanna show you more than one way to do something, I will save this one for later so I can fix them because this is the best way is to use these ones that are already from the action figures because they're flat on one side, they work great. But in case you don't have any new action figures, you can also use this stretch magic. And I have a link to it in my description for which kinds to get. They come in different diameters. This one right here is a uh, um, one millimeter for how the diameter of it. And basically it's a pretty thick one. And I would not use this because it's so thick. These are my wife's for her beading stuff. I just grab some. And then this one right here is a 0.7, probably closer to what we need. And again, I'd work it the exact same way. So I just take a piece, I'd make it extra long so I don't have to fight it so much. Chop it off. And again, the link is in the, in the description if you guys want to see what this stuff is. And I would do the exact same thing. I would just wrap it around his waist on both sides. Once you get it around his waist, you now have to work it up so it's not showing in the front. So you just bend this back. You just kind of start to roll it up. And you want it to get in the joint and all the way up inside that gap up there on both sides. The round one's a little harder to do than the um, flat one is, 
But again, it's like flossing teeth. You just work it into the, the gap and then bring it up. Now you want to be careful because this is a painted surface. And if you use sharp tools on it, you may end up taking the paint off. So be very careful as you do this. And it is a little trickier with the round one because it, it wants to fight you, which kind of stinks. As you can see, it just decided to pull right out of there. Ugh. Maybe I'll go around like this instead. Oh, I got one side up. Come on, you can do it. Okay, it's time to get a little bit more tools in here. There we go. I have some, those won't work. Let's get some neater nose pliers in here. And then let's just grab the string, pull it up to about there, and then floss it on the back side. Stinks if I was doing this for my just for myself to not show you guys, I would have already finished the other one and been done with it. But as I want to show you guys more than one way to do this. It's funny, that term came up just last Thursday, that term, uh, more than one way to skin a cat. And it was funny, we were doing a class on uh, idioms. And uh, I'm like, I know an idiom, more than one way to skin a cat. And it was just funny, the students' faces were like, what? Skin a cat? Why would anybody want to skin a cat? What is he talking about? So it was kind of funny, just the, the cultural difference. Yeah, I think the point seven might be too thick. I may have to go back and order one that's thinner just because the flatter one is a thinner type of string because it's just fighting me all the way up to get it inside there. But you guys get the idea where you're taking your work it all the way up. Maybe I got it. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, the flat one was way easier. You can do it. See, if I was smart, I would have grabbed my really small screwdriver to jam it in there all the way. Ha, ha. Oh, I thought I had it. Oh, oh, oh I think I got it. I think I got it. So close. Anyway, you guys kind of get the idea of how that works. Personally, I would use the flat string. It's way easier. If you're going to do this guy, I would get a much smaller diameter than the 0.7. I'd probably go with a 0.5 or less. So that's the problem is this one's just too thick. I don't have a thinner one here. But I am going to use this again. Stick this on and finish it so you guys can see the finished product. So I'm just grabbing the, the flat one again from inside one of the action figure packs. And this one right here just literally came from the figure I showed you guys that I opened the other day. I think it was either Roboto or, uh, or uh, um, who's the other one I opened? Or uh, Merman. So just a brand new figure. You can use their string from there. Pull it on up. We're pulling on up. Pulling on up to the sky. Anyway, I'm not the best singer in the world. Hey, my friend uh, Sludge Master's on here. Hey, man. If you guys have not checked out his channel yet, you should check it out. The guy's got some great workout tips as well as uh, things to eat while you're working out. And uh, he's helped me a lot with... Uh, making sure I'm using the right gear when I'm exercising. I used to have a really bad elbow issues when I was exercising. And he was telling me to always make sure on my elbow pads. And now that I'm wearing my elbow pads when I'm exercising, it has really helped a lot. So um, for those of you who don't know Sludge Master, check out his channel. He's a huge He-Man fan. And the dude's got tons of muscles on top of it. It is really cool. He's got like these forearms are just hugely massive. It's It's... Awesome to watch him, him work out. But anyway, um, if you guys get a chance, check it out. Look for James Justice for him. Um, I've, I've made him one of my sites that I go to. So if you check out my favorites, you will find his his uh, channel on there. So check that out. Uh, uh, uh. 
so close, yet so far away. There we go. Yeah, it was cool. James was sending me videos today showing me his collection. The dude's got so many cool old action figures from the, the 80s. It was pretty cool. All right, so now that I have that threaded through, I'm now going to take the back, cut it open, and then just tie it. When you tie this, you want to do a square knot where you go over once this way. Whew. So hard at this small little string. And then to do a true square knot, you want to switch it and go the other way. I can get that through there. I think I got it. Hooray. Let's make sure it's still up there and it is. And now if you want, you can take and glue these ends. I'm not going to this time. And just very carefully shove that up inside there. Ugh. Just jam it all up inside there. And then if you want to cut off the excess, you can. Where's my scissors? There they are. After you cut off the excess, just jam the rest of it up there. There we go. Now his waist is kind of tight. Oh, it slipped down. Of course it slipped down. Everyone's watching on video right now. Herp. Everyone's watching to see what you will do. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, you guys get the idea. It just takes a little bit of finagling to get it up past the seam. Once you get it up past the seam, it should work. But that's the way I fix the um, issue usually with this. It's just tying the clear plastic. Tie around it right around the waist and that usually works pretty good there we go ta-da bum 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 Oof. all right so now he's got a nice tight waist just like i want he's not going to be flopsy mopsy no more and uh that's it simple as that now if you want to undo it it's more of a pain to get that back out of there because you shoved it up there so high but basically the, the rubber band's wrapping around the um, the pin that goes through that part of the waist where the turn is on both sides. Now that you have it shoved up there on the front and the back. So there you go. All right, let's see your guys' comments. Wow, you guys got some comments. Hey, hello from Chile. Thanks for joining us. I learned a lot from your show. Glad I caught the show. Sorry I missed the other. Hey, James, it's okay. You know what? If you guys don't catch me live, it's fine. Just come back and, and watch the show later. That's the best way. Uh, that way you can fast forward, rewind, and not watch me go through all the mistakes over and over again. Dang, that's one super finly job. Yeah, it does. It is kind of crazy. Talking about the skin the cat. Mom's cousin back in the 1950s used to say, ooh. Yeah, that does not sound like fun, man. Some families just, just some, seem to be so messed up, don't they? All right. James says, I'm getting it. Hooray. Hello from New York. The booster pack from the Ultimate Thundercats is getting out to people. Did you receive it yet? And if so, will you do a review? I have not get it yet. And yes, I'll do a review. And I'll show you guys how to do all the repairs on it, too, at the same time. So um, I will be here for you guys for that. Thanks, Steve. I appreciate it. I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Yeah, this figure is a fun one. I actually do like this one a lot. When my when my son was younger, my youngest boy, um, the original idea is this would be a frog. You can see it has kind of a frog face. Well, my son had a pet um, green-eyed, red-eyed tree frog. And so I decided to take the original 80s version of this, 
um, that came out and turn it into a custom red eye tree frog. And I sanded it around the eyes, make them more, more friendly looking. And then I had them all tore apart and it was gonna be really cool. But then by the time I finished, I didn't actually finish it. By the time I was gonna finish, he already grew up and uh, he didn't care anymore about action figures. So there you go. What do you think about the new Masterverse and the actual price of the classics figures? I think the classic figures prices are going crazy. I can't believe it. Hold on a second, you guys. Uh, just want to show you guys some other things to do with this figure really quick. And I'm going to show you guys a head that I recently got. So you guys can see some of the cool things. So first of all, when you get this tongue lasher, the 2000X one, he comes with an extra head. Here's the extra head right here. And on the tongue, it has these teeth right here. And that's the 2000X look of these extra little teeth right here. Well, I did not like those extra teeth on there. So I carefully cut mine off and just painted it. I think it looks way cooler without the teeth, but you guys be the judge. If you like the teeth or not like the teeth, you can kind of see the difference of it. And then I uh, finally finished my figure for my Origins 2000X. Now, if you look at this head, this head is amazing, but this is not the original head. This is the original head. You can see a slight difference in the hair color and other things. This was made by my friend and I'll post a link in the description. And uh, um, actually I posted links in my description before for him, but um, this head is like 22 bucks painted and it's way cheaper than trying to track down an original one or take apart a He-Man figure for it. And uh, a way better way to make your customs. So always try to find ways to make your customs less expensive. This is one way. Now $22 is still kind of spendy, but he does all the hard work. He paints it all. And you can see the, the awesome job he did on the eyes. I mean, he did a really good job on this figure. And then I actually got some more heads from him. Uh, where are they? There they are. And, uh, so you can see this is a tan version of the same head still in the package though and so he actually made it the same color as classic he-man skin to make it darker for making my cool 2000 x customs and he also made me some new hebro armor whoops he also made me some new hebro armor as well and some new hebro swords for some custom figures that i'm, I'm, I'm working on for a guy so that would be cool too so i'll, I'll post his link in the bottom of the description so you guys can have it. Hey Matt, thanks for joining us. Yeah, the guy does really good work. I mean, his work is is extremely nice. Um, I did have to heat it up to put it on, and once you put the head on, you don't want to ever take it off because it's a harder plastic just a little bit, not a ton, just a little bit. And so um, to not mess the paint job up, I always use a heat gun to heat it up to put it on. But they're, they're fantastic. The guy does a really good job. He's been doing it for years. But I'll go ahead and post his link in the description for you guys, so you guys can have it. And he does also sell them unpainted if you want. So if you want to go for the gusto and save a little bit of money, and you're good at painting, you can go ahead and also buy them unpainted too. All right, well, that is about all that I have. Um, like, subscribe, tell your friends. Again, this was a question somebody asked. I felt bad because the guy asked the question almost a year ago. And I said, yeah, I'll make a video soon. Yeah, I'll make a video soon. And finally he asked again tonight. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to go do it. I'm going to go make the video on how to tighten the waist up so you can tighten your guys' waist up. So this is that video. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, tell your friends. And uh, I'll post that link to my friend's uh, um, store so you guys can get the heads. Hey, sure, James. I mean, dude, you're awesome. You are the superstar, man. I mean, the stuff you're doing. And, and if you guys don't know, oh, man, Sledge Master, he is the master of the sledgehammer. So he actually holds the world record for hitting a giant tree stump with this monstrous sledgehammer that him and his friends made that is just huge and massive. On his channel, he explains the whole thing. I'm probably not doing it justice. Um... But check it out. Hey, look, I just noticed the eyes are different on these guys. I know they're two different heads, but I can't believe that the this one looks more friendly and this one looks like he's evil. All right.
All right, you guys. Oh, what's what's your question, uh, Christian? What do you got? Oh, I see your video of Hordak. A hundred pound hammer. That is so cool. Yeah, you guys check out his stuff. It's it's fun. Anyway, thanks for watching. If King Gray Skull is giant, I'm gonna figure. Yeah, that would be cool if they made a giant King Gray Skull. When King, King Gray Skull first came out, I noticed he was bigger than the old five and a half figures we always used to have. So I thought he was made big on purpose, thinking he was a giant, and the rest of the figures would come in on this on this size. And then when they started releasing the other figures and they were this size, I was like, hey, what the heck? I thought that King Grayskull was a giant and that's why he was that big. But the King Grayskull that was released with this set, the very first figure that ever came out, works great for the old uh, 80s uh, He-Man figures because he's about the right size for his giantness being he's this size. And it actually is really cool to use him that way. And then, of course, you got his giant cat, which is bigger than our battle cat from the 80s. So it just works out nice to use that King Grayskull. Let's see, Matt, can you answer mine above, my friend? Let's see, what did Matt ask? Do you prefer the cross or the H on the harness? That is actually a really good question. I, I actually like them both. What I like to do is I'm, when, I, when, I, when I make my custom figures, like my ones I have for my He-Man, I actually have both um, both harnesses available. But when I make my custom uh, um, 2000X um, Hebrew figures, I use the cross exclusively. But the cartoon had the asterisks, so I like to use the asterisks just so it matches the cartoon. But the cross is cool because it reminds me of the old, um, the old He-Man from when we were kids. So, and I know they changed it up in the middle because it looked like the symbol could be from uh, Germany and during those times. So they changed the symbol up. But uh, I don't know. The asterisk matches the cartoon, so I like that. And uh, the oh, the H or the M. So, are you referring to the H as this? I think you are. I'm not sure. You mean the new one? I don't know. I'm not sure. Hold on a sec. Let me see if you've answered some of my questions to your questions. Oh, yeah. The one that looks like the battle armor. Yeah, I think that's kind of a cool thing. Um, I think it's the new armor of the new figure looks weird because the straps are so small and stretch so wide across his body. It just looks like little, um, you know, those those little straps that you would see on a on a, those those small little undershirts that women's lines wear with the small thin straps going around the way they have it. Um, I like the thicker bold straps better on the figure, obviously. But the new the new figure, the straps look so thin on it, and the piece is so wide to fit the new symbol it just looks really strange yep exactly all right you guys well i think i've answered most of your questions um uh, grizzler looks more bigger what scale figure so if i was going to make a grizzler i would uh use one of the um um actually you know what I would use the new Build-A-Figure um, Sasquatch. He is massive, and he'd make a really cool Grizzlor, that Sasquatch figure. I was going to use him to mimic a Beast Man a long time ago. I changed my mind, but man, for Grizzlor, he would be awesome. So look for the new Sasquatch uh, Build-A-Figure, and that would be an awesome way to make your Grizzlor. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you guys next video. Like, subscribe, tell your friends, and uh, that's all I got. Let's see what's coming in next. <laughs> <laughs> Customs Ahoy, yep. <laughs> all right. Bye, you guys.